Good day, Grade Tens. Welcome to this Monday and this lesson on trigonometry. I hope that you've had an awesome, awesome weekend and that you are ready to get going. I know that you've had a day at school and you might be a little bit tired, but let's get going with our trigonometry. We've been doing it for a couple of days now and we need to carry on. So before we do that, I want to show you guys how to enroll because I've noticed that we've got quite a large attendance with our, um, with our, I'm going to get this, sorry. <laughs> we've got quite a large attendance with our lessons. Um, but sorry, can you just, just hold for a second? I've got a very high, um, my computer's having, my network's having a bit of a problem. So I just need to try and change the settings. So just hold for half a second, okay? Okay, and I'm just restarting the video and that should solve the issue. Okay, there we go. That's made it better. Okay, now, like I was saying, um, what I've noticed is that a lot of you guys are actually watching the video, but there are quite a few people that are not actually enrolling in the class. And we need you to enroll in the class, like I said before, because then we can set tasks for you to do. But more importantly, you can contact me. You can tell me about sections that you want to go through, etc., etc. Okay, so what you need to do is find the browser of your choice, whether it be Chrome or... Um, Firefox or Opera for your cell phone or whatever, okay? And I want you to go to the website is www.toenable.org. If you guys are saying, but yeah, you showed us this on Friday. Well, that's because a whole lot of people were on the thing on Friday, but not many of you were actually are logged in okay that's the one thing two we've got new people every day so I have to show you guys so sorry and three get your BAMs organize and log in. I have so many metrics that I teach in class and I say to them, look at all these resources online. And the day or two days before prelims, they go, ma'am, ma'am, what was that address again? It drives me insane. So get yourselves organized, okay? So first thing you need to do is you have, if you haven't been here before, you need to register. So what you do is you put in your first name, your last name, your email address, and you click register and you follow the process. Awesome. Once you're registered, you haven't finished. You need to come back in and log in. So you need to put your email email address here yeah, and your password here yeah. and if you click the remember me then if you just type your first two letters of your email address it'll remember all this so you don't have to do it again and you click login right then you'll get to a page that looks like this it'll have the two subject progress and results and turn able help online not, not these other blue buttons okay you need to click the choose subject button it'll take you to a page with a list of all the subjects that you want you scroll down scroll down scroll down to get to maths you go to grade 10 you click enroll kick you back to this page and then what will happen is that it will say maths grade 10 and you go yay i've done it right why do we want to do this because first of all if you've enrolled in grade 10 maths and we have a live assessment going there'll be a little red button there with a number on it like a number one and what it is is basically a questionnaire multiple choice questionnaire that i'll have set and it will be for a certain period of time and it'll be on the work that we're covering or have covered and it's just for me to get an indication of what you guys understand and don't understand okay no specific people's names nothing it's just a graph that tells me who understands what okay now the other reason why you want to do this is because if you want to view a live session instead of going through facebook or twitter or one of the other ways you get here you can click or the email you can click on upcoming events and it'll get you to this page you then choose the subject you want to watch on the day and you click the view event. Now, if you see that there's two or three, like say there's grade 10 maths and maybe, okay, well look here, there's grade 12 maths there and grade 12 maths there. So what you can do is you can view the event and the, if, when you view the event, it'll tell you what, the, what we're going to be going through. So you can look and say, oh, it says we will continue to work through Eastern Cape Common Paper 1. Actually, I don't really need help with Common Paper 1. I don't need to do this. And you can go back and find another lesson that's doing stuff that you want to do. Okay. So then you click the OK because you, you've 
you've seen what it's doing, but you're not interested. However, if it's at the time of the lesson, you can click the open live TV link and you will get a screen that includes all of this. OK, once you've done that, you need to. The thing you have to do is click the green button that says join the event, join the event, okay? But but what I would suggest you do is open the feed in a new tab and notice this message studio button because that's very important. Okay, so you've clicked join the event. If you're watching um, on the time, then you will see at the right time, like now, then you'll see a live viewing of this. However, if you miss it, say you've got sport or something happens, then you can always watch a recording. But now, what's the thing about the recording? The thing about the recording is that nothing wrong with it. It's very cool to watch the recording. I don't care if you guys decide to watch it at 3 a.m. the day before you're studying for your test, the day of your test. But you cannot message the studio. If you are logged in, and you're watching a live one, then you can message me and you can say to me, um, OK, I really need help with graphs, specifically parabolas or whatever. OK, and then what can happen is that we can actually go through it. We can actually what I'll do is at the end of the section that I'm doing at the moment, I will go and do the section that you guys have requested because that's what we've done in the past so far. OK, so how cool is that now? Um, but if you're watching it at 3 a.m. in the morning, you can't message me and go, why is that? Th why is that six over there? OK, that's not possible. So that's one of the downsides of watching a recording, but the only downside. OK, also, if you guys miss something, say you watch the live viewing and but you missed it or you don't quite understand, you can watch a recording. You don't have to copy it down while I'm talking. That's the whole cool thing about the recording. OK, so now let's talk about functions. We've been talking about functions for a while. Let's carry on talking about functions. So in the last lesson, we spoke about um, straight line graphs but we didn't get as far as talking about vertical lines and horizontal lines and they are very special lines so what we need to realize is that normally we have an equation like y is equal to mx plus c where m is your slope and c is your gradient and c is your y capped and y is dependent on x in this case what they're telling us is that x equals 2 so when y is minus 1 what is x x is 2 when y is naught x is two when y is on one x is two so do you get the point that x equals two so what that means is that we're going to have a line that and i'm going to put a little crosses so you can see what i'm doing and guys since this is a beautiful straight line you need to use a ruler to draw this okay obviously like i've said before i don't have on my software a snap to grid or a ruler facility so you will see that my line's a little bit squiggled you however don't have that problem so you can use a ruler Okay, and that line there is x equals 2. It doesn't matter which point I choose on this line, x is going to equal to 2. In other words, this point here is going to be 2 minus 3. This point here is going to be 2, 2. Okay, get it. Right, now let's talk about horizontal lines. Oh, what's also important about this? What do you think the gradient is? Okay, remember the gradient is m is delta y over delta x. There is a change in x, but is there a change in y? I mean, there's no change in x, but there is a change in y. So let's go look through this. Let's go from these two points. So I'm going to call this point 1 and this point 2. So you've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It really doesn't matter which order you do this in. So it's going to be y2 is minus 3 minus 2 over 2 minus 2, which is minus 5 over 0, because that's, sorry, 2 minus 2. So do you agree that that is not possible? Because you cannot divide by a zero. It is not possible. So therefore, we can say that this gradient does not have a valid answer. Whereas, if you have horizontal lines, let's say we've got this straight line now. When x is minus 1, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 2. When x is 1, y is 2. So if we plot this, if x is minus 1, y is 2. x is naught, y is 2. 2 and x is 1, y is 2. So do you see that this line goes straight across? Straight across. And again, like I've said before, 
if you guys are drawing this in the exam on the test even for yourself you should be using a ruler a ruler okay now horizontal lines okay so let's talk about the gradient let's choose this point here where x is minus 3 and y is 2 and this point here where x is 2 y is 2. so i'm going to call this point 1 again and this point 2 it really doesn't matter so m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so y2 is going to be 2 minus y1 which is 2 all over 2 minus minus 3 which is 0 over 5 which is 0 so the gradient of a horizontal line is 0 whereas the gradient of a vertical line is not possible okay it's not a valid number okay now so we spoke about straight line graphs now we're going to talk about the parabola okay so the easiest way to get to grips with the parabola is actually to sketch it so that's what we're going to do because we've already done a bit of parabolas or you should have done a bit of parabolas in grade nine remember this this bit here is revision so if you look at this you've got y equals x squared y is equal to 2x squared and y is equal to half x squared so what we're going to do is we're going to really use this table to see what difference it make with these numbers make to my parabola okay so do you agree when x is minus 2 we've got minus 2 all squared which is 4 when x is minus 1 we've got minus 1 squared which is 1 when x is naught we've got naught squared which is naught 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4 okay so when x is minus 2 y is 4 one, two, three, four. When x is minus one, y is one. When x is naught, y is naught. When x is one, y is one. And when x is two, y is four. Now it's quite a steep parabola, so I'm gonna do my best to draw it. Okay. So I did my best, as you can see. Um, I'm not going to erase that because then it's going to erase my whole line. The most important thing I do not want to see grade 10s is a straight line there and then a straight line there. With this, you need to be drawing freehand, okay? And also, freehand, and also what's important is that you need to not be I'm going to get there, sketching. I know it says sketch in the parabola, but when I know that a lot of my grade 10s or grade 9s went in last year, when you were in grade 9, you took art. So when you take a sketch and you decided to sketch a parabola, a lot of you thought that it meant like this, like, oh, let's just sketch it, you know, like, let's shade it. No, guys, this is maths. There's none of the shading. There's no sketching. It is, and it's, kind it's not even joining the dots okay it is drawing a best fit line on the points okay so in this case because we plotted it it's actually going to be perfect but otherwise really what you're doing is looking for a graph that looks like that i don't want this either that's not a parabola that is an absolute value graph okay you want a nice round curve admittedly mine isn't perfect but then again i'm using a digital pen and pad and it's a really small drawing okay so guys please be careful Careful. And yes, I am nagging about this, but that's because I know what the teachers mark wrong. Okay, so now let's see what happens if I put a two in front of this. So now, do you agree it's for minus two, it's going to be two times minus two squared. Okay, but that's two times four, which is eight. So do you agree it's just double whatever that was? This two is multiplied by that. So therefore, this is going to be two. It's one times two is two. Naught times two is naught. One times two is two, and two times four is eight. Okay, so now if we thought that was quite a skinny graph, now we've got a very steep graph. When x is minus two, y is eight okay when x is minus one y is two and then again we're going to go through zero and when x is one y is two and when x is two y is eight and again guys i'm sorry but i'm gonna try my best
but there's no guarantee that there aren't going to be wobbles. It's bad. Okay, right. So there you go. That is y is equal to 2x squared, whereas the red one is y is just equal to x squared. And notice that because there's nothing added on to this, firstly, do you notice that they are mirror images across the y-axis. Mirror images across the y-axis. In other words, what I'm saying is that if I had to cover up this side and put a mirror here, it would look exactly the same as if that was there, okay? Or if I had to put a mirror over here and look at that side, then this would be exactly the same, okay? So they're mirror images over the other. And the second thing is that, have you noticed that the Y cut equals zero? So what does this tell us? This tells us so far that this is a happy graph. It's a positive parabola. And the reason for that is that everything in front of the x squared is positive. Okay, positive coefficient of x squared. Okay, then the other thing you need to look at is what is actually happening to the width of the parabola. So now we're going to choose a half of x squared. So do you agree that is a half times by x squared? So whatever x squared was, it's now going to be half of that. The original is 4, now it's going to be 2. The original is 1, now it's going to be a half. That's still 0. That's a half, and that is 2. So when x is minus 2, y is 2. When x is minus 1, y is a half. That's still 0. When x is 1, y is a half. And when x is 2, y is 2. 1, 2. So what has happened to this? Do you see the bigger the number in front of x squared is, the bigger the coefficient, the steeper the curve. So the greater, and we're going to call this coefficient a. And so we're going to go y is equal to ax squared, okay? And we're going to say the bigger a is, the bigger a is, the steeper the curve. In other words, the narrower the parabola. Okay, it's because we're going one, that's one, then it's two and a half. So do you see that two is double the steepness? So if this number two A is double the, the previous A, then it's double the steepness, or it's half the steepness, okay? So this thing here tells you whether it's a happy or sad parabola, okay? And it tells us the steepness. The bigger the number, the steeper the graph. Okay, right, now let's look at something else. Now we've got again y is equal to x squared, okay, but this time we've got y is equal to x squared plus 1 and y is equal to x squared minus 3. So the best way to find out what this does is actually to plot the points and do it. So I know that's tedious, but we've got to do this exercise at least once to prove it to you guys, okay. I hate just giving things and saying, that, well, there you go, there's the answer, and not ex showing you or explaining. So let's do this, okay. If x is minus 2, then we've got minus 2 squared, which is going to be 4. That's going to be 1. That's 0. That's 1. And that's 4. Okay, that's fine. Now what are they doing? Okay, well, let's plot that. If x is minus 2, y is 4. <sighs> Sorry. 4. If x is minus 1, y is 1. Not x is 1, y is 1, and if x is 2, y is 4. Okay, so there you go, y is equal to x squared. Now let's see what happens if I go y is equal to x squared plus 1, plus 1. Okay, so what are we doing? We're taking this number here, and we're adding 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay. So if I plot this, I'm now saying when x is minus 2, y is 5. When x is minus 1, y is 2. And here's a big thing. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2, 
And when x is 2, y is 5. Hmm, okay, so if I draw this, let's see if I can get it right. What you should notice is that it's equally as wide. It isn't actually narrower or shallower and everything else. But whatever has happened, do you see that this graph has moved up by one? Okay, it was cutting at, the y cut is, was cutting at zero and now it's cutting at one. So therefore we can say that the y cut now is plus one. Let's see what happens if I take this and minus three. So let's do black. So this, what we're doing is saying x squared, which is this, minus that. So 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. 1 minus 3 is, 1 minus 3 is, Sorry, I was just checking my answers. One minus, okay, 1 minus 3 is minus 2 and 4 minus 3 is 1. Okay, so let's pass it. When x is minus 2, 1, 2, y is 1. If x is minus 1, y is minus 2, 1, 2. If x is 0, y is minus 3. If x is minus, if x is 1, y is minus 2. And if x is 1, y is, if x is 2, y is 1. Okay, so if I draw this again and I plot the points. Again, what you should notice is that it's equally as wide, okay? But what has happened? It has moved down by three places. So what can we say? We can say that adding or subtracting a constant affects where the y cut is, okay? So adding or subtracting a constant, adding or subtracting a constant moves the graph up or down. And up is with a plus and down is with a minus, okay? And do you agree that they still mirror images, mirror images across the y-axis? They still have mirror images. They haven't been moved anyway. Axis. Okay, let's try something slightly different. Ah, so now we've got y equals x squared and y equals minus x squared. So do you agree this becomes 4, 1, 0, 1, 4? Now let's do this, but notice the minus is on the outside. So how would we write this? We would write this as minus, minus 2 squared. So that becomes minus 4, which is just minus 4. So really what we're saying is this here is the negative of whatever that value is. So this becomes negative 4 negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 4. Okay, so if we have to plot that, let's first plot the first one. Oh, sorry, that's supposed to be negative 4. Okay, right, if we plot the first one, when x is minus 2, y is 4, when x is minus 1, y is 1, 0, 1, and when x is 2, y is 4. So there we go. Okay, now we've got the black one, which is at the bottom. So when x is minus 2, y is minus 4. When x is minus 1, y, when x is minus 1, y is minus 1. When x is naught, y is naught. x is 1, y is minus 1. And when x is 2, y is minus 4. Okay. So do you see that what have we done? We've actually flipped this graph across the x-axis. I don't know why that's that. We've flipped it across the x-axis, okay? So therefore we can say that the negative in front is what they call a sad graph, okay? But more importantly, it has swapped the x and y values. I mean, they swapped the y values. Okay, so it's inverted the graph, inverted the graph. Okay. Right, so so far, what have we learned? We've learned the standard form of the equation where y is equal to x squared plus q, 
What does A do? I just want to see if I haven't listed it. Okay, good, I haven't. A affects the... It's the effect, it affects. It affects the amplitude. amplitude. The amplitude, okay? If it is a big positive, then we have a very steep happy graph. Okay. Um, okay, positive, steep, happy graph. Um, if it's negative, then it can will be a sad graph. And what do we know? We know the bigger the number, the steeper the graph. Okay. And what's Q? Q is our Y cut. It's where it cuts the Y axis. So we know that if Q is positive, then it cuts the Y axis above the X axis, above the X axis. If it's negative, then it's a below, below the X axis, below the X axis. Okay. And obviously if it's zero, then it goes through the origin it goes through the origin okay so let's look at this example it says sketch the graph of f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4 um sketch the graph of f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4 label all the intercepts and write down the domain and range okay so if they don't give you graph paper then obviously you just need to draw your x and y axes okay but we've got f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4. Okay, now there are a couple of ways that you can go about drawing this, but probably the easiest thing is to work out the x cuts and the y cuts. Do you agree that we know that the y cut is minus 4? Okay, so if I have to draw this graph, and guys, if you are drawing this graph, you need to use a ruler to draw your x and y axes, and you need to use a pencil. So you should be using a pencil and a ruler. Okay, so what are we saying? We are saying that we know that this is what type of graph? Because we know this is a positive, we know that it's a happy graph, a happy graph, right? We also know that it's cutting at minus four. So it's at minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So at minus four, it is going through it, okay? Now it says we now need to work out, well, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can just plot the points, so we could have done a table. And I'll show you that method. Say we've got X and Y. And what we do is we just choose numbers. We go minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. So if X is minus two, then you've got two times minus two squared, minus four which becomes eight minus four, which is four. So when X is minus two, Y is four. When X is minus one, we get two times minus one squared, minus four, which is two minus four, which is minus two. When X is naught, Y is minus four. When X is one, you've got two minus four is minus two. And when X is two, you've got eight minus four, which is four. Okay, so then what you do is you plot it. You go, well, when X is minus two, one, two, Y is four, one, two, three, four. So you go X equals minus two. When X is minus one, minus one, Y is minus two, one, two. Just make that cross. When X is naught, Y is minus four, which we knew anyway. When X is one, Y is minus two, one, two. And when X is two, Y is four. So there you go, there is your, oopsie. Let's try again. And that's why you do this in pencil. There is your graph, more or less. But they did say to label all the intercepts. So then how would you find that? So wouldn't it be better, since you know the kind of shape that you're going for, to just work out your intercepts? So what do we do to do that? Do you agree that we know, let me erase this, 
we know that where it cuts the x-axis, what value has to be zero? Do you agree that y has to be zero? Where it cuts the x-axis. So we're going to let y equals zero. So you've got zero is equal to 2x squared minus 4. And now what we're doing is solving for x. So we're going to take out a common factor of 2 and you're left with x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. So then we can just divide both sides by 2 and we get 0. So you get 0 is equal to x squared minus 2. Therefore, x squared is equal to 2. Therefore, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. And if you find that on your calculator, you'll see it's 1.1 something. So you know that the cuts are going to be 1.1 something and 1.1 something. And then all you do is you join the dots and you do it better than I do on this digital pad. Okay, and I know my graph looks terrible, but seriously, it's pretty hard to draw. Well, I find it hard to draw on this. Okay, so the able the intercepts. Intercepts are going to be x is naught, y is minus 4. x is going to be root 2, 0, and this one's going to be minus root 2, 0. So what is the domain? Remember the domain is how far this graph stretches across the x-axis. So do you agree that it carries on and 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 on to minus infinity, right? And it carries on and on and on and on and on to positive infinity, right? So the domain is just going to be x is an element of real values. The range be y is an element of real values, but where does it start? It starts at minus 4. This graph doesn't exist below this number, okay? So therefore, y is going to be greater than equal to minus 4. Okay, let's now move on to the hyperbola. Hyperbola. Okay, so let's think about what we've gone through. We've gone through the straight line graph. We've gone through the parabola. And when we did the straight line graphs, we also did the vertical and the horizontal lines. Now we're going to talk about the hyperbola. And again, the best way to do this is to sketch it. Okay, so when x equals minus 4, what answer you get? Well, let's just substitute it in. 2 divided by minus 4 is equal to minus a half. So that's minus a half. When x is minus 2, y is going to be minus 1. When x is minus 1, y is going to be minus 2. When x is naught, it's not applicable because you do not divide by a 0. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 1. And when x is 4, y is a half. Okay, so now what we need to do is plot these points, okay? So let's do that, okay? When x is minus 4, y is minus a half. When x is minus 2, y is minus 1. When x is minus 1, y is minus 2. Or when x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 1, and when x is 4, y is a half. So do you agree we've actually got two graphs here? We've got this one here, and we've got this one here. And what you came across when you looked at this was the asymptote, that when x is 0, y did not exist. So therefore, we can say that this is an asymptote. An asymptote is a line in the graph that the graph cannot touch across. And similarly, this bit here asymp is then asymptote. Asymptote, okay? So asymptotes are basically lines that the graph cannot cross. In other words, they have got no valid solutions or numbers, no valid solutions or numbers. Okay, what have you also noticed? You notice that this graph is valid in two quadrants. It's valid in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, and in the third quadrant. Okay, and finally that there you need to realize is actually the 
positive graph, okay? If this had been, just let me show you. Unless I've got an example of it. Yes, I do. Okay, so never mind. It's in the next page. Okay, so notice that this gets closer and closer and closer to minus two, my, the x equals zero line, but doesn't touch it. And similarly, this one gets closer and closer and closer to the y equals zero line and doesn't touch it, and vice versa. Okay, so that's what's called a hyperbola. Now, if we have y equals minus two over x, what do we get? Well, let's have a look. If x is minus 4, you get 2 over minus minus 4, which is 2 divided by 4, which is a half. If x is minus 2, then you've got 2 over minus minus 2, which is going to be 2 divided by 2, which is 1. If x is minus 1, you're going to have 2. If x is naught, not applicable. If x is 1, we're going to get minus 2. If x is 2, I don't know what that is. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm only joking. If, <laughs> okay, if x is minus 2, what have we got? We've got minus 2 over 2, which is minus 1. So that's minus 1. And if x is 4, we've got minus 2 over 4, which is minus a half. Minus a half. There we go. Okay, so now let's plot this, shall we? Let's plot it. Okay. So, when x is minus 4, y is a half. When x is minus 2, y is 1. When x is minus 1, y is 2. So, do you see you've got a graph doing this? Hmm, okay. Similarly, when x is 1, y is minus 2. When x is 2, y is minus 1. And when x is 4, y is minus a half. So again, we've got a graph doing that. Okay, so look at this one. You've got this one here, which has the same shape. Doesn't cut the x and y axes because they're asymptotes, but it's in the first and third quadrant, and that is a positive graph, okay? So think about this. Do you agree that these are all positive values and these are all positive values? So plus times a plus is a plus, right? These are all negative values and these are all negative values. And a minus times minus is a plus, okay? So that is why these are called the positive quadrants, okay? Whereas over here, you've got this one here where you've got the minus. Yeah, you've got minus times a plus is a minus. Yeah, you've got minus times a plus is a minus. These are negative quadrants. That's quadrant two and quadrant four, they are considered to be the negative quadrants, okay? And then finally, you'll notice again that they don't cut the x and y axes because again, these are your asymptotes. These are your asymptotes. Okay, now let's talk about what happens if we take y equals two over x and we add one. Okay, so what have we got? Might as well just substitute. So we've got 2 over minus 4 plus 1, which is going to be minus a half plus 1, which is going to be a half. So that's a half. This one, if we substitute minus 2 in, we get 2 over minus 2 plus 1. 2 divided by minus 2 is minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay, now we've got minus 1. We've got 2 over minus 1 plus 1 is going to be minus a half plus 1, which is a half. Okay, when x is naught, can you divide by a is naught? No, so that goes away and you just have to answer 1. If x is 1, you've got 2 divided by 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 4 is a half. This is going to be 1 and a half. Okay, so let's see if we can plot this. When x is minus 4, y, when x is minus 4, y is a half. When x is naught, when x is minus 2, minus 2, y is 0. When x is minus 1, y is a half. So 
sorry, that's not right, because this becomes 2 over minus 1 plus 1, which becomes minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. Sorry, guys, that's minus 1. So when x is minus 1, y is minus 1. Okay, and please note, when x is naught, y is 1. Okay, we'll start the, when x is naught, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 3. When x is, is that right, 2 divided by 1 is 2. Oh, I don't know what's going on here, I can't tell you now. When x is 2, then we've got 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus 1 is 2. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 4, Four, we get 2 divided by 4 is a half, plus 1 is 1 and a half. So there we go, 1 and a half, and that's when it's at 4. So you've got this here, and you've got this here. Oopsie. Um, eraser. This here. What is this point telling us? That point there is telling us what the new asymptote is. The new asymptote is that y equals 1. That's what it's saying here. It's saying it cannot cut through the y equals 1. So that plus 1 is giving us our new asymptote. What are the new asymptotes? The vertical asymptote, I mean as in the y-axis asymptote remains. So the other asymptote is this. So if I was asked to give equations of the two asymptotes, it would be that x equals, sorry, that y equals 1, okay, and that x equals 0, okay. Right, so do you notice now that what has happened? Now, we, if we had to work out the domain and range, the range of this graph would be what? If, it was, if we had to work out the range of this graph, do you agree that this is the asymptote? And this would be the asymptote. So I would just go x is an element of real values for x does not equal 0. And y is an element of real values for y does not equal 0. There you go. That's it. Okay. Now what are we doing? Now... We can't cross the x equals the y equals one line. So you could say y is element of real numbers for y does not equal one. That would solve the problem. Done. And then the domain would be x is an element of real values. X um, does not equal zero. Right, great tens. That's it for today. I hope you've had a good lesson and you've learned a lot. Please come back on Wednesday and join us and we will continue with some more hyperbolas. Have a great day. Cheers.